ultimately, applied behavior analysis is the basis behind all of this. Verbal behavior is a specific approach to it where we're really focusing in on motivation and categories of language and how to teach communication and language. Um, and none of this is coming from me. I'm not the inventor of ABA. I'm not, you know, I didn't do the scientific studies that, that guide most of this stuff. Um, I am doing a few things now that I'm focusing on where we're learning that, hey, if I try to handle extinction a little bit differently than, than a lot of people are doing it, I've been seeing some success and there's some things that we are working on that we're doing a little differently. Um, and I'm trying to get to the point where I can start to show that to the larger community. Um, but in general, what I've done with, with my book is take the, the science behind the ABA and write it out in a way that is understandable and easily clear to follow to just a typical teacher or a parent or, or a therapist or anybody who might be working with a child. You don't have to have a master's degree in special education and be an ABA specialist behavior analyst to be able to understand these concepts. Um, you do need the guidance of one of those people because otherwise it's very easy to kind of screw this up. It's really easy to try to do things and to do the exact opposite of what you want. And you have somebody with experience and um, certification behind them, especially the board certification, I think is without question the best international certification board. Um, to find someone like that who can guide you is the best thing you can do. But in addition to that, what I've done is I've taken these, these ideas and I've tried to break them down and really make them understandable to everyone and anyone so that you can at least begin to benefit from them right away in your own homes. Um, now, Fine, I'm John. Was macht das Mädchen? Mädchen ist es absolut. Ganz prima. Was macht der Mann? Ganz wichtig. Prima. Und der Junge? Junge. Tierfahrer. Prima. Und was macht der Junge? Junge. Zeigt das. Prima. Was macht der Mann? Mann. Was macht der Mann? Mann. Kerl. Der saugt Stau? Videos that you saw there, that looks like a kind of teaching you would want to do, does it not? I mean, there's nothing in that 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 is, even the stuff with Anton, that was really difficult in the beginning, where we were withholding reinforcement, and he was yelling and screaming and, and pushing. Um, we did that all with a purpose. Even the little brother Edgar was saying, well, just give it to him. I know what he wants. Give it to him. What, are you stupid? <laughs> and sometimes we get that from grandma and grandpa. Who are sitting there saying, "Well, why don't you, you have to give it to him? He's, he, I know what he wants." The problem is, is well, we all know what he wants. The problem is, is the way he's going about getting it. And if we just hand the child whatever they want, however they ask for it, they're never going to make any progress. So at some point, you have to be able to say, "This is the this is the way that's going to get you what you want, and this way is no longer going to work." And then be willing to have and have the skills and the abilities and the willingness to sit through that period of what we call extinction burst, where we no longer are giving reinforcement to the child and they start to have this burst behavior where they get upset. If we reinforce that extinction burst, we're actually going to make the behaviors get worse. So if you're not going to reinforce a child because they're crying and screaming and then they start hitting themselves in the head or biting you and then you reinforce that, well they're going to start biting and hitting even more. That's why it can be dangerous to use applied behavior analysis without the right, leader, without the right guidance, without leadership. Um, but if you have the right techniques and you understand how to get through that process and how to minimize the extinction burst and how to really motivate and prompt so that the child can be successful and to do it the right way, you can see really amazing changes in quite a few of the kids that we work with. We, had, we did a survey in the first three years that we were together and uh, all the families that we worked with, we just asked them questions about how they, how they felt. And what we found was that there was about 5% of our kids that even with our best interventions were still getting almost no progress. We really weren't seeing any major progress. And for those kids, it was a longer, longer process to try to really pull each and every skill out of them with the best techniques. Um, so we don't necessarily have the answer for every kid. Uh, but we have had kids that within a year's time, they had, all they really needed was instructional control. And once we gave them instructional control, once we could start controlling their decision making and their ability to work and their desire to work, they could learn everything they needed to learn to the point where a year or two years later, you could no longer even see any signs of autism anymore. So the question is, is were these kids autistic to begin with? Or were they just behaviorally challenged? 
I don't know. Bottom line is, is that's an argument for someone else. The definition of autism is you have you demonstrate a certain number of behavior excesses or deficits. And if you demonstrate them, you have and you don't have a reason for it, it's called autism. Well, there's kids who are demonstrating those excesses and those deficits probably for lots of different reasons. Um, it could be genetic, it could be environmental, it could be um, behavioral issues, it could be motivation issues. But whatever's causing that, it doesn't matter. If we can find the right teacher where the child now starts making enough success where they're no longer demonstrating those behaviors anymore, well then those are the kids that we would call recovered. Meaning that they're no longer demonstrating enough behavior, that autistic behavior to be called autistic. That does happen. It doesn't happen as often as we like. But it is possible for some kids. But that is never our goal. Our goal is to help a child be more successful one day to the next. I know, I have to take questions. Um, okay, well anyway, I was just making the point that kids can develop differently, and some kids make incredible development. Other kids, we have a hard time really still pulling them along. Our ultimate goal is that if the child even moves along slowly, but a year from now, their life is better. A year from that, their life is better. It's still well worth it, rather than just saying, your child can't learn, or accepting no progress year in and year out, um, and no language. Um, okay, any questions for me? You're all like, well, I understand English, but I hate to use it. <laughs> so I prefer not to ask any questions. Uh, is there anybody who has anything that they'd like to know about? Um, any questions about it? Wow, I must be really good at what I do. <laughs> uh, I've answered all the questions you could possibly have. Good, I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah? You say you're, you're focusing on parents. Yes. Yeah. So who is paying for your services? Uh, in Germany, when we first got to Germany seven years ago, um, families had to pay our service. But we very quickly started getting them the information they needed to go to the insurance companies and to their local government agencies um, to request coverage. The insurance companies always turned us down. They always have their reasons, ABA is experimental, which it's not. Um, we don't have any studies in German so that, that back up supporting ABA, which is true, but scientific journals they are almost always in English anyway and they should be able to read those things. There's always a reason why the insurance companies are turning it down. So the insurance companies are saying no. But because they're saying no, there's part of the German government, um, the children's arm of the government, the children's uh, area that's supposed to cover photorum, what's the word for photorum? Like development for children with disabilities. Um, anything that the insurance doesn't cover, if they deem that it's worthwhile, they will cover it. And we started by getting one local agency to cover us on a trial basis. They said, for six months, we'll let you do that. Because we came in, we showed them videos, we showed them what we've already been doing with the child for a whole year. And we said, you guys should be covering this because it's going to make costs for this child go down in the future. Um, we said, okay, six months. And, and after six months, we were able to show them the change in the child and the videos, able to show them the changes in the tables assessment, that all the stuff that they were learning, and that this was so much more than they had gained in the other institutions that were available. They said, okay, another six months, and another six months. And then all of a sudden it was a second land crisis and a third. We now have almost 80% of all of our bills being paid for by the local government agencies. 